patty made up right here. Ready. Well, guys, as I told you last night, when we were finishing up the um, processing of the pig, that I was going to try to show y'all just how we fix this uh, wild boar or wild sow. <clears throat> so what I've done, hey, we saved us some meat out, some of our ground meat, and I've just got that patty made up right here, just like hamburger patty, like you would do. And give you an idea, a friend of mine put me onto this Texas Brothers barbecue dry rub, and that's all I sprinkled on this tonight. Um, I've got the pit boss going. It's about 300, so I'm going to check that first. I'm going to go ahead and throw these on, guys. Uh, one of the things I'm going to tell you about that pit boss is I've just quit using our gas grill. I've been known to come out here and turn it on just to cook a hot dog on it. But anyway, hey, we're not doing anything fancy here. I'm just flopping them hamburger patties on there and we'll shut that down. And here I've got our cubed up back strap. I sprinkled it with some of that uh, Texas Brothers barbecue seasoning also. And it's just been setting. And what I'm gonna do now is get ready to fry this. I've got me just some flour here with some peppers, all I put in my flour. I don't want to over get this too salty, so all I did with my flour was I've got it with just some pepper in it. So what I've learned, the easiest thing to do here is to go ahead and just get these um, breaded. It makes it nice when you come to the shop to do this and you're not in the house and making a big mess in the house. My daughter uh, put me on to deep frying it. And I'd always fried a deer steak in the house just in a regular black skillet. And hey, inevitably it would stick and once it stuck, you um, hey, end up losing the bread into it and everything. And for whatever reason, Keely put me on to just deep frying it. And in deep frying it, I use my fish cooker for that. So here you can see we've got it all breaded. So now fish can get ready to take it and go to the grease with it here. So I've floured it and I've got my milk and egg bath here. And I'm just going to plop these, dip them, and then plop them back in the flour real quick. And kind of let them drain off here in the pan. I've already checked on my grease over there and I know I'm plenty hot, so. And we're frying this in peanut oil, guys. So I'm going to kind of watch this like I do fish. Hey, it, we've dropped it in and it's basically down in the grease bowl and I'm going to wait for it to come up to the top. Once it comes up to the top, I'm going to let it fry and I'm going to flip it over and then I'm just going to wait till it gets to a nice pretty brown consistency there. And you can see how it's coming up to the top right here. So it's floated up to the top, which is exactly what when I'm cooking fish, fish does the same thing. Um, you got a piece right here that's still down in the grease, pretty good and bubbling. So right now we're just watching it and hey, all I know to tell you is it's just a experience thing on when you know it's done or not. But I'm just trying to get a nice golden brown color to it.
you kind of judge some of the doneness by just how much bubble your bubble I pay for me telling you I think that's your moisture cooking out of your meat. So guys, I'm just kind of watching it here, looking at it, and I'm just going to kind of pull a piece up and just kind of show you what I'm going to start looking for in it. You can almost see how it's getting the dark brown, the burnt part coming into it, and that's me telling it it's, hey, it's getting done. You can look at it and physically tell that it's not bubbling the way it was. And that, hey, the darker, I mean, you don't want to burn it here, but that dark color to it, that's getting it really good and crisp for you, which is what I like. Hey, and what I can't get over is just how much difference it made deep frying it versus frying it in a skillet here. And I like to hold it off for just a few minutes here and get you a little more light on that, um, to where I drain as much oil as possible off of that. So guys, I'm looking here at 10 burger patties. I'm gonna go ahead and flip them over. And one thing to be mindful of on these hamburger patties, they're really lean, so they're not gonna take long to cook right there. But you can see we've got some good grill marks on them. Those will be coming off pretty quick. Guys, I've dropped the last batch of the chicken frying in right here. It's just about ready to come out. I'm gonna let that keep browning just a little bit more right there. Let's look at our hamburger patties over here. Hamburger patties are ready to come off. I'm gonna go ahead and pull them off. So guys, as you can see right here, I got my hamburger patties out. I'm going to the house, I'm gonna try one of those. And we're gonna reach right over here and our chicken fry is ready to come out. As you can see, they're nice golden brown. I don't know how to talk enough about um, what you eat and you know how you fix it and everything. But I'm gonna tell you guys, a lot of food with your wild game we have, hey, I say as Americans, have lost a lot of our taste for wild game. The one thing about this pork, though, I could serve this tonight with gravy and mashed potatoes, and I don't think anybody could figure out that I had served them wild pork tonight. The hamburger patties, they might could tell those by because they're a little drier, but with the chicken fry, I could just about fool anybody, I think. But guys, hey, don't be scared to get out there and try stuff, and when somebody starts talking about uh, food ain't fit to eat, um, try it for yourself before you let somebody tell you that it ain't fit to eat.